Hello and welcome to another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. I'm your host, Chad Marshak. My program today is whole body circuit training, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. Justin Knadler and Henry Her Herwitz are going to join me today. Justin's actually going to serve as the intermediate guinea pig, and Henry's going to be the advanced guinea pig. So we're going to give you a, a, a whole body exercise routine today that you can actually do in a 30-minute time frame, basically from fingernails to toenails. So we're going to start with a warm-up, and then we're going to cut to the chase and get going with uh, the rest of the program. So the first thing we're going to do is a warm-up routine. Uh, we're going to start off with 10 soldiers for 30 seconds. Justin's going to start by standing in place and performing just kicking opposite hand to foot. And Henry's actually going to perform it while he's moving. And again, this is for 30 seconds. Warming up's really important before you start this program. Any type of a conditioning program, it's important to warm up properly. Kind of gets the blood going, gets the joints ready for, for warfare. And that's 30 seconds. All right, now we're going to move on to the walking posterior reaching lunge. And again, we're going to do this for 30 seconds. So this, one, this particular exercise is a good exercise because it helps to kind of lengthen the hip flexors, lengthens the abdominal region, uh, kind of gets your shoulders rolling. And again, it's opposite arm to leg. So if the right leg is moving forward, you see that the left leg is moving forward. So right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. So it's, this is just a contralateral movement pattern, really going to stretch the abdominals. Okay, gentlemen, that's 30 seconds. Now we're going to move on to a simulated jump rope. Both you guys can do this. Henry, why don't you stand to the side? Ready, set, go. So if you don't have a jump rope, or if you live in an apartment or a house that doesn't have very high ceilings, then you certainly uh, can still do this exercise. You're never going to miss jumping rope by not using a rope. So this is 30 seconds. And again, you can extend these warm-up drills out a little bit longer. We don't have a lot of time in the program today, so we want to just kind of give you uh, a taste of what it looks like. And that's it. Good. That's 30 seconds. All right, the fourth and final exercise we're going to do for the warm-up is the walking dumbbell rotations. Justin's going to perform this exercise in a stationary position. Henry, it's going to do it moving. Go, guys. This is a great exercise because it really focuses on the thoracic spine, the middle back, helps to mobilize it in what's called the frontal plane. Again, this is an area that's often uh, most people lack mobility in their mid-back. It's a great exercise to just kind of get those mid-back Muscles working and also your thoracic spine, the T-spine, mobilized and moving more fluidly. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Now you notice in terms of the dumbbells we're using, uh, you don't have to use too much weight. Five to ten pounds would be fine. You can also use a medicine ball in that drill. A lot of people don't have medicine balls, so we thought we'd show you how to do it with a dumbbell. All right. Okay, now... The program, basically the program, we've broken it down into, again, an intermediate, which is Justin, and an advanced, which would be Henry. For each circuit, we've broken it down into four movements. We're going to start off with a core exercise, follow up with a strength movement, either for the upper body. Uh, for example, for the first circuit, we're going to do a, a leg movement, followed by a shoulder movement, followed by a cardio movement. So four movements for the first circuit, four moves for the second circuit, four for the third, and then four for the fourth. So I'll kind of explain each exercise as we move forward. But once we get going, we're going to roll. So get ready. OK. First circuit, we're going to start off for the core. Justin, you're going to do a plank. Henry, you're going to do a plank mountain climbers. Henry, why don't you do this from the side? So for the plank mountain climbers, ready, set, go. Again, this is for 30 seconds. Justin, the intermediate, is just doing a plank. You're just going to place your elbows beneath your shoulders. Make sure you protract your shoulders so you're not bowed here through the back. Keep your hips up so you have a nice straight line. Henry's just doing the same plank position, but he's driving his knees forward in an alternating fashion, like he's climbing the side of a mountain, except he's in a 
horizontal position. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Good, okay. So we're going to transition. We're going to take about 15 seconds to transition into the next movement. So you can pick up your dumbbells. And this next exercise is a split stance isometric hold squat for Justin. And then Henry's going to do the split stance overhead squat. So we're going to perform this for 30 seconds with each leg forward. Are you ready? Set, go. Okay, Henry, why don't you stand to the side and get a better idea of what they're doing. Justin, why don't you stand a little bit more to the side, too, so get a good shot. Okay, Henry's holding the advanced version, the dumbbells above his shoulders, assuming a split stance position. He's going down and up. Make sure that you stride out far enough that your feet are aligned uh, with your hips and that your forward shin is straight up and down. You see Justin's forward shin, nice, nice and straight here. Three, two, one. Good. Okay, go ahead and switch sides. Now, Justin, why don't you face the camera straight on now so they get an idea what you look like. Ready, set, go. So again, on the intermediate version, nice upright posture through the trunk. And this exercise is really good because it's going to work the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, of course. And again, if you have a greater load, the advanced side, a lot of shoulder action here, plus the paraspinal muscles in the back are really cooking. You can also count reps on any of these exercises if you want. But I like to do time. We're demonstrating uh, this whole circuit today using time intervals. Three, two, one, and that's 30 seconds. Good. OK, now we're going to move on to a shoulder movement, which this exercise routine is called Y's and T's. Justin's actually going to do it where he's just going to bang out his reps, 12 reps each. I made a mistake. We're actually doing this is the only exercise where we're counting reps. Everything else is time. Okay, so you guys are going to do 12 reps of each movement. So the Y pattern, Henry, why don't you stand to the side? There you go. So count 12, guys. Henry's going to hold each one for a three count. Justin's actually just going <clears> to <throat> perform each rep in a nice controlled fashion. Spine angle is really critical on this exercise. You want to make sure you have a nice flat spine, weight distributed through your heels, hips back. And you want to get, make sure you get your arms in that Y pattern for the first movement of this exercise series. Again, this is a Y and a T pattern. Great exercise for the posterior delts, the rotator cuff musculature, the middle and the lower trapezius. These middle and lower trapezius muscles oftentimes aren't as strong as they need to be. It's a great exercise to help shore up any muscle imbalances in that region. And again, anytime you hold something for a count at the top, this isometric hold for a three count, the musculature has to work that much harder. Okay, so now we're going to go into the T pattern. Henry, go ahead and stay to the side. And now the T pattern, just a little bit different twist. Again, still posterior delt, a little more middle trap, lower trapezius action. It's also key when you do this exercise either the Y or the T pattern, that if you notice, their thumbs are actually facing the ceiling. All right, that's really important because we want to involve those lower trapezius muscles and rhombo uh, middle trap muscles and not emphasize the rhomboids. Usually there's a muscle imbalance there. So we want to de-emphasize the rhomboids. If you have your hand in a neutral position, it's more rhomboid action. Thumbs up, we want lower and middle traps. Much better from a postural standpoint. How many is that, Henry? Is that 12? Are you cheating? OK, very good. All right, that's the Y and the T movement pattern. Next, we're going to do the cardio. We're going to do speed squats and squat jumps. Henry is going to do the squat jumps. Now, this is for time. This is tough. It's important if you have knee issues or back or hip issues, this may not be an exercise for you. Justin's going to demonstrate just simple old speed squats for time. Ready, gentlemen, set, and go. So. You can do this a couple of different ways. Henry's doing this in a prisoner's jump squat fashion. Henry, you can also do it where you go down, touch mid chin, and then jump and touch the ceiling. Either or is acceptable. Justin's just cranking out prisoner squats. Make sure you keep your heels aligned with your hips, essentially. Toes pointed out slightly. Four, three, two, one, time. That's 30 seconds. Good, guys. 
Okay, that's the completion of the first circuit. Now, typically, you'd want to rest anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute. Again, depending on your level of fitness, you may need a little bit more rest. That's, that's okay. Again, depending on your fitness. Don't worry about it if you need to take a little bit more time. We're going to take anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute. So the next circuit we're going to start with, we're going to do a side plank, a plank two different plank movements, both, both intermediate and advanced. Then we're going to do a chest, a pushing movement. And then we're going to do a pulling movement and followed by another cardio series. Okay, guys, got about 15 seconds. Let's get ready. So Justin's going to get set up for this exercise. We're going to do a side plank. Henry's going to do a side plank with a dumbbell horizontal reach into a press. Now this exercise is pretty tough that Henry's going to demonstrate. Justin, why don't you kind of get a little bit more... Yeah, more, bring your feet back this way a little bit more. That's cool. So you can kind of get an idea of what you look like. Ready, gentlemen, set, and go. So dumbbell on this, you probably aren't going to use a whole lot of weight because when you reach out horizontally, uh, your body really has to kind of decelerate that forward action of the shoulder. But this is a really tough move. It. Justin is just getting into a plank action. Position rather, you really want to focus on drawing a straight line from your shoulder through your hip, through your knee, through your ankle. So nice straight line here. Position your elbow directly underneath your shoulder. Three, two, and one. You can do this one of two ways as an intermediate. You can actually place your hand above your shoulder if you want or just place it at your side. Either one is acceptable. Ready, set, and go. So 30 more seconds. If you notice Henry here, He's got a little bit more movement because, especially as he presses out, as he displaces the weight away from his body, it's, it makes it more difficult. Justin, you can also place your hand down at your side, of course. You want to make sure that you keep your head in alignment with your, uh, the rest of your body. You don't want to tilt it to the right or down or jutting forward. Nice straight even position here like Henry's demonstrating. Three, two, and one. That's 30 seconds. Good. Usually when you're doing a circuit, you want to have pretty much your equipment at hand so you can make that transition quickly to the next exercise. You know, the whole purpose of circuit training when you're incorporating resistance is to kind of get that big bang for your buck where you're getting a lot of uh, cardio action for your heart as well as strength, strength uh, emphasis, the anaerobic aspect for the rest of your body, for your muscles. Okay, we're going to move on to the dumbbell row and the split stance dumbbell row. Henry's going to demonstrate the split Oh, I'm sorry. We got push-up patterns next. My bad. So Henry's going to demonstrate the, demons, uh, the dumbbell push-up row. Justin's going to do the isometric push-up holds. Ready, set, go. I was confused, guys. Sorry. So for the intermediate, Justin's just going to hold this push-up position. Some people can't do push-ups. Fine. You can do these isometric push-up holds. If you have bad wrists, then use a pair of hex head dumbbells beneath. Some people don't have good wrist extension. You can keep your hand in a neutral position if you have a hex head dumbbell. Henry's doing the push-up row. You want to have your feet wider than your hips. You're just going to go down into a push-up and then row the dumbbell to one side. You want to try to keep your hips and shoulders on the same plane, preferably. Three, two, one, time. Henry was really working his chest musculature as well as his arms, shoulders, abdominals, all right, back as well. Justin, really more the chest, shoulders, abdominals. Okay, now we're going to go into the row movement. I got ahead of myself. Justin's going to demonstrate the dumbbell row, just the bent over dumbbell row. So grab a pair of dumbbells. Henry's going to do a split stance dumbbell row. We're going to do this for time. And this is 30 seconds. Henry, you're going to do this 30 seconds with each foot forward. Justin, you only have to do it for 30 seconds, you lucky dog. Ready, set, go. The split stance, the more advanced version, you want to distribute your body weight through the forward heel. That's really going to get your hamstring activated. You want a nice straight back here. Justin is just making sure he's got a parallel stance, driving his hips back, weight on his heels, has his feet about hip width apart. Five, four, three, two, one. And if you notice with Justin, he's just rowing the weights up to his side. Ready, Hen? Set, go. A 
weight on all of these exercises, you really kind of have to experiment and figure out what works best for you. Obviously, if you can't last 30 seconds, for example, for this particular exercise with the dumbbells that uh, Henry's using, 20-pound dumbbells, then you're going to want to lighten the load the next time around. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of experiment and figure out how much weight you need to use on a lot whenever you're doing any type of circuit training. Three, two, one. That's 30 seconds. Good. Okay, now we're going to transition into the cardio. We're going to do stationary sprint skips, Justin. And Henry, you're going to do the scissor split jumps. You ready? Set, go. So Henry is doing like a scissor split jump. And Justin is kind of, I don't know what those are. I don't know if those are really the, the sprint. I guess those are the sprint skips. I usually take my feet out, drag them out a little bit more. Go ahead and face to the side, Justin, so they can get an idea. Henry, get up in the air. So obviously a little bit more of a plyometric action with Henry. Henry's having to work a lot harder. Three, two, one. Really important that you have that contralateral arm action um, with your legs, so right arm forward if your left arm's uh, left leg's forward, okay? Just like you're walking, you want to walk like this, you don't walk like this. I can't even do it. So you shouldn't perform that particular cardio segment with the same arm leg moving forward. It's opposite, all right? Activate your core a lot more. So now we're resting a little bit. Rest, again, important if you need water. Henry, you're sweating. You're good. He's good, he says. That's what you can do when you're 25. Again, if you have mechanical uh, flaws, a lot of times it's going to cause pain. So if you have pain, that's an indicator that something's wrong mechanically. So you need to make sure that you readjust, reassess your mechanics on any of these exercises. If you have continued pain after kind of uh, taking a look at your um, mechanics, if you can't figure out what the cause of the pain is, don't do the exercise, all right? All right, third circuit. First exercise we're going to do is, uh, again, for the core. Justin's going to demonstrate a, a V pattern or a V hold um, with a, what I call an alternating leg pattern. So one leg is going to be on the floor where one foot's going to be up in the air. Henry's just going to get in a nice V pattern. You're going to see what I'm talking about here in a second. You ready? Set, go. So on this one, Henry is, you want to kind of sit back, nice straight spine, really tough on the core. If you notice, Justin's doing essentially the same thing, but with one foot on the ground. And again, big time core. If you lift your arms up a little bit more, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging. The lower your arms are, the easier it is. So if you want to ramp it up, make it more challenging, lift your arms up. Five, four, three, two, one. Henry made that look pretty easy, but that's a really tough exercise. You can, of course, alternate with each leg, too. If you want to leave one foot on the ground for 15 seconds, if your whole exercise is 30 seconds, then switch legs halfway through. You're, you can do that as well. Okay, cool. All right, next we're going to move on to the uh, leg movements. Jess is going to do a frontal plane, isometric, uh, frontal plane lunge with an isometric hold. Henry is going to do what's called a leg excursion, all right? Now, this guy's, we're going to do 30 seconds for each leg, all right? So, Henry, actually, what I want you to do, Henry, is do a series of five reps. Laterally, front, side, or posterior, side, and then forward, okay? And I'll kind of walk you through each exercise here and explain it. All right, you ready? So, Justin's going to get in the isometric lunge pattern. He's just going to... Uh, Reach out, he's going to hold this for 30 seconds. You want to make sure that your hip is aligned with your heel. All right, knee forward, nice straight spine. Henry's doing an excursion pattern, a leg excursion. He's going to balance on one leg, get into a semi-squat position. Then he's going to take his uh, foot and he's going to bring it out laterally and tap the ground five times and back at an angle five times posteriorly off his hip. Let's go forward now so they can kind of see what's going on. Time, Justin. And go, Justin. And so it's five to the left, five posteriorly, posteriorly, I can't even say that, off your hip, and then five forward, okay? You want to come forward, straight in alignment with your hip. Again, your hips are really having to work hard to keep your body aligned properly. 
Okay, and this trailing leg here, really important, you make sure that you keep that leg, knee straight, so the adductor muscle gets a nice big stretch, that inner thigh muscle, and time, good. And again, that's really gonna work the hip. When you get down into that lateral lunge position with your hands out, your weight distributed through your heel, so your hamstring and the glute gets activated. Great exercise, great exercise. Okay, gentlemen, on to the next exercise. Now we're going back to a shoulder, a pressing movement. Justin's going to do a split stance, dumbbell curl and press. So we have shoulders and arms for this one. Henry's going to do a split stance squat with a dumbbell curl and press. Okay? So, again, Justin, on this one, you're just split stance, dumbbell curl and press. So we're going to do a series 30 seconds with each foot forward. So this exercise pattern is one minute long. You ready? Set, go. Why don't you stand to the side? You want to stay on the side? Yeah, just split your stance. You don't have to squat too much, Justin. Henry's down into a split stance squat. All right, so again, anytime you're doing a, a split stance squat, a lot of hip action, a lot of hamstring, legs are working, this, but this is shoulders and arms too, biceps specifically. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Justin's just doing a, he's splitting his stance. Okay, a little more balance required here. What's cool about this is that whenever you're doing a split stance, set, go guys. If I'm standing here and I have issues with my pelvis, I may, when I press above my head because I don't have good mobility in my shoulders, my hips may jut forward. If you split your stance like so, it really gets that pelvis nice alignment. So the, the ilium, the pelvis is neither anteriorly or posteriorly rotated. So it's where it needs to be. Keep your head straight. Five. Four, three, two, one, time. Good, guys. All right. Again, you may need to play around with the weight on that one. I would recommend error on the side of being too light and too heavy. All right. If this is, if you're new to exercise or physical activity, you need to kind of pace yourself to kind of figure out how you're going to respond to that activity. Okay, next we're going to move on to the sidestep and the creek jumps. The sidestep, Justin's going to demonstrate that. Again, this is an intermediate. Henry's going to demonstrate the creek jump, and this is more advanced. Okay, ready, set, go. So now we're into our cardio movement. So the creek jump, you really kind of want to visualize jumping over a creek laterally. So if Henry had a little four-foot creek that ran beneath his feet. He's jumping over that creek, and Justin's doing almost kind of more like a skater step pattern. So he's just going side to side. It's less ballistic a lot less demanding on the hips. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Good guys. All right, we're going to rest for about a minute. And we've got one more circuit to demonstrate. Again, when you're doing that side step pattern of the creek jump, you want to make sure you load those hips so it's more here, more here. So keeping those hips back so you have a nice spine angle. It shouldn't look like this. All right, bad <coughs> posture. So keep your head focused straight ahead and go side to side, all right? You're gonna get a lot of hip action, plus your paraspinal muscles in your back are gonna to work too. You guys doing okay? Yeah. I would say they're getting their workout. Plus it makes a little high, uh, it's a little bit warmer in here with the, the lighting when we film. Okay, fourth and final circuit. Justin's gonna demonstrate a dual Swiss ball knee tuck. Henry's gonna demonstrate a Swiss ball alternating knee tuck, all right? So Henry, you're going to do this for 15 seconds with one leg and then 15 with the other. You ready, guys? Set, go. So you need a Swiss ball on this. We really try to keep the equipment of bare bones today. So really just dumbbells and a Swiss ball. That's all you need. Okay, Justin's doing two legs. Henry's doing one leg at a time where you're just drawing your knees into your stomach. Henry, that's halfway. So you want to make sure your hands are out beneath your shoulders. Place your feet on the Swiss ball and draw your knees into your stomach. Henry, keep this other leg straight. You want to size up your Swiss ball. This Swiss ball may be a little bit too big, Henry, but that's okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Great exercise for the lower abdominal musculature, plus the shoulder stabilizers are working. Anytime you use an unstable piece of equipment, unstable apparatus like a Swiss ball, especially for your core, your abdominals are really kicking hard. A lot of the other 
areas of your body are working as well. Okay, next we're going to move on to clock walks and spider walks. Justin's going to demonstrate a clock walk. Henry, why don't you move, yeah, that's cool. Go ahead and plop down on the ground, right where you are, it's fine. We'll get these dumbbells out of the way. And this is for chest and shoulders. Set, go. So Justin's going to get in what's called a clock position. He's just going to move from, say, 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Imagine a clock on the ground, and you're moving your hands, keeping your, your feet are the pivot point here. And Henry's doing a spider walk, more advanced, where his hands are directly beneath his shoulders. His body is parallel to the ground, and he's just moving laterally. All right, a lot of chest, a lot of core, a lot of arm action. Three, two, one. Good. Good. Oh, guys, we're about, we're about finished here. So we're going to move back, on, back into a uh, rowing movement for the back musculature. Justin's going to demonstrate a single arm dumbbell row. I knew you were going to use a lighter weight, not man up and use a 50. All right, there you go. Good. All right, now Henry's going to demonstrate a dumbbell alternating row. Okay, this is for, Henry, I'm going to have you do this for 22 and a half seconds and switch legs. Justin, you're going to do this for uh, 22 and a half each arm. Ready, set, go. So this is 45 seconds. So on this pattern, this is a bent over split uh, and position, and Henry's doing the split stance position, right foot forward, left foot behind you. Three, two, one, time, switch. Henry, turn the other side now, right there. Set, go. This is a lot of back action, lats, just row back up towards your hips. Henry's doing an alternating rowing pattern, more movement, more energy. All right, that's why it's advanced. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great exercise for the back. Okay, our last cardio, guys. Justin, you're going to do a step over, stationary step over. Henry's going to do a step over and step under. You ready, guys? Set, go. This is for 30 seconds. Last thing, we're almost finished here. Henry's going to envision stepping over, say, a fence, and then stepping under the fence. Justin, why don't you turn to the side now? And Justin's simply going to simulate stepping over a fence. All right, obviously, a little harder when you have to step over and step under. More movement, more energy. Adductors working a lot more here for Henry and his hip rotators. Justin, just more hip rotator action. Three, two, and one. That's it. Now, if we had time, we'd cool down and maybe do uh, go through a stretching routine, but we're really out of time today. Man, you kicked butt. Good job, Justin. Atta boy. Atta boy. So if you have questions about what we do here at Body Symmetry, feel free to call us anytime. Check out our website at bodysymmetry.com, and by all means, go to freefitnessvideos.com. It's an awesome website. Put a lot of time into it. This program right here that you're watching right now is going to appear on the web on freefitnessvideos.com. Thanks again for joining me on another edition of Personal Health and Fitness. Until next time, I'm your host, Chad Marshick. Hey, Quinn and Riley.